So good afternoon. My name is Stéphane Supier. I'm a professor of radiation oncology at the University of Nantes in France. I'm working at the Institut de Cancerologie de l'Ouest. And I'm in charge of GU tumors uh, there and uh, dealing with mostly prostate cancer. So we conducted a randomized phase 2 study that combined SBRT to oligometastatic lymph nodes or bone lesions in prostate cancer, hormone-sensitive prostate cancer. And the trial randomized jovalumab, which is a, a pdl one inhibitor. And so we delivered a conventional three-fraction doses to oligometastatic lesions, and we combined it with one-year jovalumab. So the main results of our trial was ne sadly negative. Progression-free survival at two years was similar between the two arms. And this was also not significantly different between ADT-free survival or biochemical response. The toxicity was as expected, I would say, but we sadly observed that one patient died of uh, immune-related toxicity. So that's probably too high in this uh, otherwise good prognosis uh, category of patients. And interestingly, what we noted is that we can observe um, some uh, very long-term deeply responding patients at two, even three or four years. And those patients are really interesting to understand their biology behind it. So we perform some CTC measurements, we perform some CTC analysis of pd one expression, as well as immune monitoring. At the moment, those results are exploratory, but uh, we found that uh, uh, CTC number at for one month after radiotherapy could be a kind of predictive factor for the long-term response, which is encouraging and may allow us to discriminate between uh, responding and non-responding patients. We also showed that uh, uh, patients with a high number of uh, PD-1 positive uh, circulating tumor cells also responded better to Diovolumab than uh, the others. And lastly, we also could uh, discriminate, well, describe at least uh, the, the lymphocyte uh, chain, blood changes in, uh, in patients. And we saw some uh, uh, reduction in uh, the total CD8 and CD4 lymphocyte count. And this was correlated partly with a, with a progression-free survival, especially patients who, we, who had a very high level of uh, uh, memory T cells uh, initially. So that's something that needs to be uh, better understood. We probably need more analysis and we are performing other analyses such as copy number variation numbers on sequencing CTCs. But uh, yeah, the question is, not any, everybody benefits from the combination therapy, but we need to better determine who might really be a good candidate for improving the SBRT strategy using uh, checkpoint inhibitors. There are three different ways. One is to um, increase systemic treatment by using ADT or intensified ADT with uh, uh, next generation ADT. So that's one trial which is led by Bayer, which name is Arastep. Another one is uh, combining SBRT and uh, PSMA lutetium, which is also very interesting uh, in a curative pseudo-curative strategy. And the name of the trial is uh, PSMA DC led by Novartis. And the third strategy, which is about to start, is uh, combining SBRT plus other immune modulatory drugs. And for example, KLK3, uh, CD3, um, dual targeting agents are being developed uh, by Johnson & Johnson. And the trial combining that drug with uh, SBRT is soon to be starting. So I think there are many ways to take benefit of the Real all activity of SBRT to oligometastatic prostate cancer and combinations will be key and we will probably have new results in the next two to three years. If. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.